Desmond Landers here, your startup advisor and partner in entrepreneurship, and welcome to our video today on how to work for an entrepreneur. First thing you must know about working for an entrepreneur is that you're going into a volatile environment. Volatile is not a bad thing, it just means that you're gonna experience frequent change. So if you're someone who is not comfortable with frequent change, do not work for an entrepreneur because it's not the place for you and it, you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, next thing, understand that a job doesn't really exist, right? When you get hired uh, in an entrepreneurial environment, they may think it's a job or they may offer you a job or write a job description and you applied and gave your resume, but essentially you're joining a very small team and everyone on that team, while they have their traditional and normal focuses, uh, could easily be called into other roles. And so if you're someone who's not adaptable or malleable or be able to fit into different situations, this is probably not going to be the environment for you because you're getting less of a job and more of a role as a team member who's got a focus but who can also deviate when needed. Now, uh, the next thing you'll want to do is if you decide that, hey, this is an opportunity that I want to take a look at, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to ask the entrepreneur, what is the current financial state of the business? Um, you want to know that, hey, by hiring me, uh, am I the difference between you being uh, in the green or, or you being in the red, right? Or are you uh, making a profit or you breaking even or, or taking a loss? If you're close to that point, uh, a lot of pressure is going to be on you. You're not going to like it and the entrepreneur is not going to like it unless you are directly tied to uh, revenue, which is another one of my points I'll get to in a minute. So ask if you, uh, uh, what is the financial state of the business? And then number two is ask what the profit plan is for growth, right? If they're taking a loss by bringing you on, no problem. Businesses do all that all the time. It would be helpful if there was some venture capital or equity funding, as they call it, or some debt financing from a bank to give them the runway to be able to pay you even if they haven't caught up where the projections financially say they should be catching up. But even if that is not the case and they're self-funded and they're getting by month by month, it's not necessarily a bad place to be solely off of that. But make sure you see what the profit plan is to make sure you're comfortable to see if where they're going into the short term and near future is going to get you in a more comfortable place where you're not going to be the difference between them uh, taking a loss, hitting break even, or getting just a little bit of, of, of profit. Now, the third thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tie your role in, in, in any way you can to revenue, right? I hear a lot of people complaining, talking about, oh, well, they missed paying me on payday or, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I'm not making what I used to make in corporate and all those things. Look, instead of complaining, why don't you just try to uh, connect yourself to the re revenue generating part of the business, even if the entrepreneur does not build that role for you, go to them and say, hey, is there anything that I can work out separate of what you're paying me on a fixed basis to work in this part of your business? Is there anything I can work out to where if I bring you a new web design client or if I bring you a new uh, insurance policy holder or if, I, or if I bring you a new tax client, you'll give me a, a, a fairly good size commission for bringing you that new business. Because you know I'm a little iffy right now on if I'm going to continue to be happy making this, but I do like what you're doing here and I do like this organization. I want to be here for the long term. This would ensure that one, the responsibility would be on me, um, two, you'd be generating new revenue so we went together, and three, that I would actually be able to increase my income without having to directly uh, uh, affect your bottom line, uh, but I would be more so affecting it on, you know, on the top line. So uh, try to connect yourself to revenue. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is understand that your project probably will be either once or many times underfunded, delayed, and maybe even erased. Here's why. Priorities change every single day. You are not in a in big co, as I call it, where things move very slow and there's a couple hundred people having to make the decision. No, things change every day because the business is trying to stay alive. And while jumping to different new things every single day is not good, sometimes that's a necessary evil. Not necessarily uh, things that are customer facing, but if there's projects and things shifting around internally, you've got to get comfortable that, you know, if an entrepreneur or the owner of the business says, hey, I want you to work on this project because we're going to launch this next week. And then, oh, by the way, two days later, hey, we decided that we're not going to launch it because of this reason. We're going to go in this direction. Now I need your help over here. That's just the way the game is played until the business grows into a more mature uh, organization. So you've got to understand that. Uh, the next thing you'll want to do is you want to learn first and innovate second. I see so many people coming into an organization, uh, especially small organizations where a lot of things have been tried and there's not a lot of resources and, and some resources have been wasted on trying new things and new ideas, trying to figure it out, right? I see a lot of people coming in and say, this is the way they would do it. This is how I would do it. This is the way I work. This is how I want to do it. And they don't really have a solid understanding of the business. Now, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it takes a year, five or 10 for you to get the learning curve at that business. If it takes you 30 minutes, that's cool with me. I know I'm a fast learner. I don't need 
10 years to learn something, uh, depending on what it is, right? But I don't need a long time. I think in big corporations, they really stretch out the amount of time that people success up the corporate ladder and all that stuff. I think a lot of that time is artificially inflated and it's because those organizations are too heavy and there's too many competitors for those positions. And a smaller organization, look, I'm just expecting you to come in and say, hey, okay, tell me everything about this business. Hey, maybe wait a few days, maybe wait a few weeks, not because you're waiting for the sake of waiting, but because it may take just that amount of time for you to see the different uh, situations we have with our customers or our suppliers or uh, the interrelations of the business partners for you to get a really good understanding of what the core of this business is, what has been done before, and how you can innovate in a way that's actually meaningful for the entrepreneur. Um, uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is this immediately vocalize any concerns that you have. You don't want to keep things lingering because a lot of times we don't have, as entrepreneurs, time to be concerned about everyone's feelings. I mean, we want to treat everyone right, but when we're bringing people on the organization, we're expecting them to kind of head the ship in their area. Hey, check in with me when you can. But really, the reason I brought you on is to buy time and to buy decision making, right? So I need you to do that uh, without a lot of emotions involved. And if you are feeling yourself getting emotional, uh, you're getting angry or getting frustrated or you're getting depressed or whatever it is because of the volatility of the environment, then just pull the entrepreneur or the business side, owner aside and say, hey, this is what's going on. Here's how it's making me feel. But the number one thing that you should also do is bring an immediate solution. Look, entrepreneurs are problem solvers. Anytime you can bring a solution and not just a problem, they're going to love you and maybe even worship you <laughs> for it, actually. Uh, the, the last thing is this. Be patient and learn all you can. Appreciate the fact that you're in a small environment. Many people never get the opportunity to work in a small environment where everyone knows everyone's name and everyone is bonding together as a team and things may be bad some days and things may be great some, di some days, but you're working together. And if you're coming into an, uh, newly into an organization like that, there's a lot that you can learn that you can then take back to Big Co, right? That if you ever go back and you can say, look, things aren't so bad here. I've got um, all expenses paid. I've got benefits. I've got a direct deposit check that's coming out every two weeks. Appreciate the situation for what it is so that you either ever leave and go back into uh, uh, the big co traditional corporate America environment, or if you go off and run your own thing, you'll be prepared and you'll have a variety of different professional experiences either way. So that is the way to work for an entrepreneur, especially without getting frustrated, angry, or sad. <laughs> I'm Desmond Landers, your startup advisor and partner in entrepreneurship. Uh, appreciate your time watching this video and I'll see you soon. Thanks.